CBC Here and Now. It would be good to have that respect for the people of Labrador West and to finalize me who is going to be the member for that district. Tonight, opening the legislature with only 39 MHAs. The NDP questions why Dwight Ball would reopen the House before the Labrador West recount is final. And... When this course came along, I felt this was it. A big day for these graduates. The first ever Inuit Bachelor of Education class graduated from Memorial. Good evening and welcome to Here and Now. I'm Anthony Germain. And I'm Debbie Cooper. First, a doctor in this province is facing serious allegations of sexual misconduct by members of the RCMP. This is not the first time a Mountie doctor has faced complaints and, as Ryan Cook reports, this case will have the same outcome as the others. Seven people have come forward to the Royal Newfoundland Constabulary with complaints against one doctor. We believe all seven complainants are current or former members of the RCMP. We know that the RNC investigated those complaints and will not lay charges. Now we've also confirmed that this doctor is a different doctor than one cleared by Halifax police earlier this week. On Tuesday, CBC Nova Scotia reported that police wouldn't lay charges against an unnamed RCMP doctor after 152 people complained. Karen Miller was one of those complainants. Here's how she described the start of her first medical exam as a 21-year-old recruit in a backless gown. So I want you to stand uh, facing the wall and I'm going to ask you to bend down a couple of times and touch your toes. So I did that, but as I was doing it, um, he's standing behind me and I'm thinking, what's going on? Miller says he also performed vaginal, rectal and breast exams, which felt wrong. Aside from the 152 complainants in Nova Scotia, there were 30 complaints by women in Ontario against another RCMP doctor. No charges were laid in that case either. All RCMP recruits are required to undergo medical testing before joining the academy in Regina. It's not clear what exactly the allegations in Newfoundland were, but we're told they were similar to the other 182 complaints in Nova Scotia and Ontario. We also don't know when or where the alleged incidents took place. All police will say right now is that the complaints are historical in nature. Ryan Cook, CBC News, St. John's. A 54-year-old man is dead after an industrial accident this morning in New Harbour. A spokesperson for the RCMP tells the CBC the man was working in the driveway of a home with a paving company when he was killed. Police did not provide any more details. Public sector workers went to school in St. John's today, but it's the provincial government that was getting a lesson. What do we want? What do we want? CUPE held a strike school on the steps of the Confederation Building. Dozens of public sector workers practiced their chanting, as you heard there, marching as well, and how to maintain a picket line. But the real audience for the strike school was inside the building. CUPE is trying to set the tone for upcoming contract negotiations. We all need to know that we are coming. If he's going to stay in government, he, know, he must know that CUPE Newfoundland and Labrador, the master bargaining section, we are coming and we are coming with an vengeance. We're not looking for a strike, but we are not going to bargain concessions in 2020. It's not going to happen. We're not going to accept zeros and no concessions. The province's voters may have voted for change in the election, but the leader of the NDP is welcoming the stability of the Premier's familiar cabinet choices. Here now is Carolyn Stokes, spoke with Alison Coffin today, and Carolyn joins us live from the newsroom. So Carolyn, what was Ms. Coffin's reaction to this new cabinet? Yeah, new cabinet for sure. Uh, she thinks the Premier actually made the right move by keeping the status quo because with the budget still unsettled, Coffin doesn't want to change horses midstream. Now, the cabinet is pretty much identical to what we saw before the election. There's only one new face. Brian War of Baybert Green Bay was handed the education and early childhood development portfolio. Coffin says the new liberal minority government will have to make changes to how it does business, but now is not the time for a shakeup within the ranks. 
Well, not at all surprised. I mean, really, they have a much smaller number of people to choose from, and it makes a lot of sense. Since we're going into the budget that they had proposed before the election, it's kind of nice to have that continuity of individuals who were there when the budget was put in place to be able to respond to any questions that we might have through the estimates process. So there are conversations happening, absolutely, and given the fact that uh, the budget was dropped and the House was closed and an election was called so quickly, we haven't had a chance to really go through in any depth and talk about what's going on with the budget, some of the uh, more um, uh, intricate details of the budget and some of the implications of that. So at this point, I uh, will not commit to passing the budget until I have a good chance to really look at it. Now, Coffin is disappointed with the decision to reopen the House of Assembly before the judicial recount in Lab West is complete later this month. NDP member-elect Jordan Brown ousted former Liberal Cabinet Minister Graham Leto by only five votes in that district. So on June 10th, 39 MHAs will be sworn in while the Lab West seat stays empty. And I really like to see that the people of Labrador West are represented in the House when any decisions are being made. I mean, really, that's kind of how democracy works. But we are endeavoring to get Jordan down to be in the House of Assembly, just to sit in the gallery to take part and, be, and uh, listen to the budget speech and, of course, listen to the debate on the budget as well as the speech from the throne. I feel good. I got the same count twice. I'm thinking that the third time you know, should be a charm, really. And my understanding is, historically, these things are not uh, overturned. Uh, generally, the count is right and it remains right. I mean, there may be some questions about a particular ballot, but in general, these things tend to uh, one, fall the same way as they have on election night. And it's certainly a high stakes recount as the balance of power hinges on the result. And with that one Lab West seat still in limbo, the Liberals will be opening the House with a 20 seat government, 19 seats in opposition, and a speaker yet to be chosen. Debbie? Thanks, Carolyn. That's our Carolyn Stokes reporting live from our newsroom. Operators of the Terra Nova oil field are going to make some changes to the production vessel that will extend the lifespan of the project. The announcement came from the project's operator Suncor and the other partners in that project. They say the makeover will add 10 years to the life of the floating production vessel and it will be able to extract another 80 million barrels of oil. That work will begin next year. Uh, you know how you maintenance your cars and everything? Yes. So it's basically maintenance of your body. So like you clean your body and it's like you clean yourself. Right. It's a time of worship. Coming up in 15 minutes on Here and Now. We take a closer look at Ramadan, the month-long Muslim celebration that comes to an end next week. What a difference 24 hours can make. Those temperatures significantly cooler today, especially uh, for the metro area. Only reached a high near four degrees in St. John's with single digit temperatures along the northeast coast. Double digits as we head towards uh, central and the west coast. Labrador still in those cooler temperatures, five to nine degrees essentially. And we can thank the system that, uh, or the next system that's rolling in. You can see that low spinning just uh, west of Labrador City right now, bringing plenty of cloud cover across the province. This is going to be our weather maker as we head through the weekend. It's not all bad news though. Towards the end of the weekend does look like the sun will peak out. I'll have all the details coming up. Thanks, Ashley. A local philanthropist has stepped in to save the fluvarium in St. John's for now. After hearing about the center's financial troubles, Eleanor Ratcliffe wrote a $75,000 check to help keep the doors open. The educational center is in a financial crisis after Suncor ended its annual contribution. You may recall the board auctioned off a Mary Pratt painting earlier this week for money to pay its staff. The Newfoundland Growlers are set to play game four in the Kelly Cup finals tonight in Toledo. Pass Johnston. Hard pass ahead and in come the Growlers on the left wing. Now the Growlers lost Wednesday's away game to the Toledo Walleye, but they still have a 2-1 lead in that series. And today the team took to the ice in Toledo for a practice skate ahead of tonight's game. And they've been on the ice for a practice skate each day that they've been there. Defenseman Christian Rubens says the crowd in Toledo may have thrown them off their game on Wednesday. Uh, I think we're going to be uh, way better than we were the last time. I think uh, a part of, a, you know, the kind of uh, those emotions uh, because the rank was so full and loud. I think uh, 
you know that was that cost a little bit on uh, our game, but uh, I think uh, everyone's already got used to it. Of, you know, one game is away, so. The first ever Inuit Bachelor of Education class had its convocation today. Inuit students, in partnership with the Nunatsiavut government, studied Indigenous culture, including their own language. Here now's Meg Roberts has more now on how these students are being encouraged to bring those teachings back home. Doris Bowes. It's a day Doris Boas from Hopedale never thought she would see. After finishing high school, she didn't think she was capable of graduating from post-secondary, but today she's one of 10 Inuit students graduating from Munn's first Inuit Bachelor of Education program. Along the way, I was trying to find out where my role was supposed to fit in life. And when this course came along, I felt this was it. Boas's journey hasn't been easy. She spent years away from her family, losing both her mother and grandmother while taking courses in Happy Valley Goose Bay. But today, all that hard work has paid off. The role I have now as an institute teacher, I think um, this, that was my dream, and I'm, I'm actually living it right now. Along with learning in Uktitut, Boas says her class was taught traditional practices, learned about self-governance and decolonization. And while for now it's just a one-time offered program, its lead professor says there's been a lot of success. It is a university working in partnership with an Indigenous government. That's hugely important. It's also important in terms of an Indigenous government having teachers who are fully qualified. Now, Boas says she's excited to finally go home and do what she was destined to do. Without my culture, I am no one. Um, I'm an Inuk first and foremost before my birth name or my job title is, is who I am. Meg Roberts, CBC News, St. John's. Call him Dr. Buddy. Just a couple of hours ago, Kevin Blackmore and his bandmates, who make up the iconic Buddy Wuss's name and the other fellers, were made honorary doctors. Like the graduates at today's convocation at Memorial University, Kevin Blackmore, Wayne Chalk, and Ray Johnson waited patiently in their seats until they were called to the stage. The three have received honorary degrees in recognition of their musical contribution to the province's culture. And, of course, you didn't think these guys would stay serious for too long, did you? Madam Chancellor, Your Honour, Mr. President, members of the Board of Regents, and members of the Senate, and faculty, members of the graduating class, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Is you happy? <laughs> You've got to be happy. <laughs> I bet you I could get you going. Boys, oh boys, oh boys. She's awful bad, you oh, know. She's bad, just real bad. Real bad. She's bad? Real bad. She's really she's bad. Awful bad. She's real yeah, bad. she's really bad, folks. She's gone. She's, she's gone, 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 gone. She's gone and she's not coming back, Wayne. No. She's not coming back, is she, buddy? Not coming no. back, no. She's not I didn't know she was going to get this bad, did you? No, sir, Wayne. Did you, if you know? If you had asked me if I thought it was going to get this bad, I would have, I would have said nobody. Nobody. No. <laughs> Why is the arse has gone right out of her? Gone. You're not getting arse back in her. Not with an AC one. No, sir. No, sir. But I suppose now, when you look at it, I mean, she's not all that bad. Uh -huh. She's not all that bad. Uh, Wayne, what? forgive me for asking this stupid question, what? but what in God's name are you talking about? Well, we're, we're talking about the topic of the university uh, giving us honorary degrees, right? <laughs> she's awful bad. Isn't she's she? awful no, bad. bad. She's <laughs> awful bad. Sing along. Her parents once a husband with riches, wealth, and fame. I hope to wealth, but riches and fame has never come my way. The night they went to visit my love and drew the kill, say, Sarah, Sarah, won't you come out tonight? Sarah, Sarah, the moon is shining. <laughs> Certainly uh, better than a speech. Yes. <laughs> they, the word was used, iconic. They certainly are. They've brought a lot of smiles to an awful lot yeah. of people. Good to see them laughing at Munn today. Congratulations. congratulations. Yes, congratulations.
Welcome back, everyone. Students at a school in Kings Point got to take a break from the books this year thanks to something called Genius Hour. For one hour each Friday, students got to work on a special project. Yeah, and some baked. Uh, others decided to build the solar panels. And <laughs> like you would. Yeah, why not? <laughs> and one student even built himself an electric guitar. Cheaper that way, I suspect. <laughs> CBC's Melissa Tobin swung by Valmont Academy to meet this young fellow. My name is Raleigh Burt. Uh, I'm a grade 12 student here at Valmont Academy in Kings Point, Newfoundland. You're as sweet so baby why? I've been playing guitar for six years and uh, at first, I wasn't going to make a guitar. I was actually thinking about doing knitting or something like that. But then I said, whatever, let's, let's, let's try it. And uh, so I uh, collected some wood from a local who owned a sawmill. And I harvested a, uh, a piece of oak from a United Church, an old United Church here in town. And I got to it. <laughs> Started doing some research, a lot of YouTube videos. In, in physics right now, we were doing a electromagnetism unit in physics. And I never realized until I was installing the guitar's pickups that it can relate a lot to electromagnetism, which is how the guitar's pickups work when you plug it into an amp. So it really puts things into perspective. It's not a picture of a schematic diagram on a piece of paper. So you can actually put that stuff to life and solder those wires together or stuff like that, right? So, it's a, it's a really, it's a practical way of learning. I picked it up and I plugged it into the amp. It made a chord and I was just like, yes, it actually works. It was definitely a, a relief to actually make a sound come out of the guitar. I didn't care if it played a chord or not, it just, it made a sound, so I, I was happy. <laughs> You're as a wolf, as a glass of brandy, on the ice is stone, on your love all the time. Go Riley! Yeah, what a great That's story! Fantastic! That's such Melissa a great story. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. It was awesome. Speaking about great, yep. is it going to be great? Oh, it sure wasn't great today. No, uh, oh. not on the Avalon. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm gone past Friday now. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, no, that's cool. Uh, it, it was. Uh, we're, we're ending the month of May very much like we started it. Cool. It's been cool uh, most of this month. We've really only hit the double digits ten times. Uh, that's it. That's it. Yeah. yeah. So we're gonna start kind of June, the, June in the June. same way, but then it, it, it does look like it's gonna warm up. So we'll Good. get into that. Uh, here's our temperatures for today, just in case you missed them a little bit earlier. Four degrees was the afternoon high in St. John's. Uh, towards Central, those were the double digits into the teens, and then. Lab City at five degrees. Those current temperatures have dropped a little bit, only sitting at two degrees right now in St. John's, four in Labrador City, and then Corner Brook still sitting at 11 degrees as we speak. Now, taking a look at the setup, we do have that low pressure system that we talked about yesterday. It's spinning just west of Labrador right now. We're getting that counterclockwise rotation that's bringing all of that cloud cover in across the uh, island and up through Labrador. It's going to stay unsettled as we head through the night tonight, but you can see just how large this system is, which is why it's taking so long uh, and will take so long to move through as we head towards the weekend. So here's a look at, uh, we'll add some satellite to, or some radar to that rather. We're seeing plenty of showers this afternoon and uh, some showers moving through the Buren Peninsula. If we take a look at what the future tracker is saying, we're going to start to or we're going to continue to see that potential for some showers overnight tonight, especially along the West Coast up through Labrador overnight tonight. That will change over to the chance of some flurries as well, just because those temperatures are going to drop, likely just going to stay cloudy for most of the Avalon and Eastern Newfoundland with showers moving in potentially by morning, uh, but still have that chance of a few showers, maybe some drizzle 
uh, just to be safe uh, for the Avalon. Two degrees should be the overnight low, so not moving much. Maybe one more degree from where we're sitting now. Four degrees in Gander, uh, five in Corner Brook. Same for Port of Asks, and again, still have that uh, that risk of showers in there, or at least drizzle through the night tonight with those cloudy skies uh, continuing. Lab City, either rain or snow tonight, two degrees. Four for Happy Valley Goose Bay. That should just be some showers, and then uh, Cartwright sitting around one this after or uh, this evening rather. So here's a look at uh, tomorrow. Things should clear out at some point tomorrow afternoon, especially along the west coast towards central. Likely not going to see those clearing skies for the Avalon until the evening hours and then staying unsettled up through Labrador. That's where that low is sitting uh, and essentially staying there right through the weekend. Just uh, some clearing skies towards the evening hours more than likely, or at least some partially clearing skies there. So here's a look at those temperatures a little bit better than today by a couple of degrees. Six degrees is the afternoon high I have for St. John's tomorrow. Southeasterly is 20 to 30 kilometers per hour. Uh, as we head towards Clarenville, 10 degrees, 11 in Marystown. We'll see some uh, peaks of sun, as I mentioned. Uh, towards the afternoon, late afternoon, early evening. Going to likely stay socked into that cloud cover for most of the Avalon. Heading towards Grand Falls, Windsor, those temperatures getting a little bit warmer. 15 degrees for you. Harbor Breton, 8 degrees tomorrow. A little bit cooler along the coast there. 10 for Burgio. And then Stephenville, Corner Brook, plenty of sunshine tomorrow afternoon once those showers move out of the way in the morning. Gross Morn, uh, same thing towards the afternoon. Uh, St. Anthony with that potential for some showers tomorrow, 8 degrees. And then up through Labrador, temperatures for Lab City likely going to stay in the 5 to 6 degree range uh, with that potential for some snow in the morning and then changing over to the chance of uh, showers in the afternoon. Happy Valley Goose Bay, 12 degrees, and then Nain. Still looking at uh, two degrees with some brisk easterly winds. So that's a look at Saturday's forecast. Sunday looks better. I'll have all the details coming up. Well, the Muslim celebration of Ramadan is nearing its end. Ramadan is a month-long celebration that includes prayer, fasting during the day, and eating at night. And tonight we're sharing a new series which looks at how Muslim Newfoundlanders and Labradorians are marking this fast. Prajwala Dikshit brings you Ramadan on the Rock. <laughs> Ramadan is the most holy month in the Muslim year. It celebrates uh, perseverance and um, you feel what others feel. Uh, you know how you maintenance your cars and everything? Yes. So it's basically maintenance of your body. So like you clean your body and it's like you clean yourself. Right. It's a time of worship. Right. Ramadan, the holiest month for Muslims across the world, is filled with fasting from dawn to dusk, festivity and food. I've been lucky to experience Ramadan and Eid in India and Dubai. But what does Ramadan look like in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean? What does it mean to be a Muslim Newfoundlander? Looking for answers, I, Prajwala Dikshit, went into the homes and hearts of people exploring Ramadan on the Rock. Three twenty-five in the morning. Yes. <laughs> and what are we doing here? We are having sahur. What's sahur? Mm -hmm. uh, it's a super early breakfast when you are uh, fasting. Fasting for Ramadan. Ramadan. And what's Ramadan? Ramadan is the holy month where Muslims fast from dawn to dusk. Mm -hmm. um, we're not allowed to eat. Mm -hmm. Not allowed to drink. And we're also not allowed to do a few other things. <laughs> <laughs> Care to elaborate about a few other things? Um, the idea is that when you're fasting, mm. you don't, um, you don't tell a lie. You don't, uh, mm. you don't even get angry at anyone. Right. Even if you have any disagreement with right. someone, you're supposed to say that I'm fasting. So we're gonna deal with it later. <laughs> right. It's about. Controlling yourself and abstaining from uh, any kind of evils. Discipline? Discipline, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, suhoor so is the pre-dawn meal. Right. And today you have to finish eating before? I believe today's uh, last time is 3.40, 4.41. 3.41. Yeah. And does that time increase? No, it's been decreasing. It decreases yeah. every day. Okay. So, this one is decreasing, and, and if the that is, is increasing, yeah. So I see. overall, the uh, span of the time that you're uh, fasting is increasing. Is this a typical suhoor meal that you have? I generally have something like this. Yeah, something and, and like what are you having today? 
um, something that doesn't involve me cooking. <laughs> so in the, mid- dates, in the middle of the night. Um, nuts, banana, mm. um, clementine, mm. cereal, mm. Uh, my go-to breakfast yeah. meal, and Nutella sandwich. What would you like to see your future Ramadans and Eids to look like? Paint as a picture. Uh, hopefully, I'm not the only one eating. What does that mean? <laughs> um, having family over, so yeah. whether it's my brother coming over, right, or if I settle down and I have a family of right. my own, or if my parents were to come over. Right. Um, I have, even after coming here, I have gone back home for uh, two or three Ramadans. Right. Because this is the time when I miss the, my family right. the most. Right, the most. Yeah. yeah. So every time where I've gotten a chance to go back, I have yeah. gone back. The discipline. Yes, right. I learned a few things about that month-long fast of theirs and yeah. all the traditions. Yeah. We have something coming up later we in do. the program. We do. Yeah, there's more uh, Ramadan on the Rock, so stay tuned. We have this little guy here. He may not come out because he likes to hide in a lot, but you can see his little pincers right there. So the hermit crab actually lives in these shells. Well, this hermit crab and many other crustaceans will be on display in St. John's over the weekend. Ahead, host Jane Aidy gets up close and personal with sea life, like the hermit crab. We'll tell you why.
Welcome back once again. Well, tomorrow marks the first day of June. It's also the start of World Oceans Week, which kicks off a seven-day countdown to World Oceans Day. Yeah, and World Oceans Day got its start back in the early 90s, and it's since grown into a big global event. And here in St. John's, the Marine Institute has big plans for tomorrow, and the broadcast Jane 80 has all the details. I'm here at the Northwest Atlantic Fisheries Center and I'm joined by Don Mercer. Don, tell me a bit about what you do. I'm a senior oceans biologist here at DFO and I work primarily with setting up marine protected area networks in and around the province. Okay. So World Oceans Day is coming up on June 8th and I know there's going to be uh, events all week long. You're kicking it off this Saturday, June 1st at the Marine Institute. Tell me what's going to happen there. Yes, this is an annual event that we've been having now since uh, 2007. We've been at the Marine Institute since 2010, and it's a really fun day. It's a free family event uh, for all ages. People can come in, they can touch a sea cucumber in our touch tanks, they can explore a fisheries patrol boat outside, they can listen to the sounds of whales, they can even age a seal. There's lots to see and do. So you mentioned the touch tank, mm -hmm. and I know that's, all, that's always a big hit with kids and adults alike. Let's have a look in the touch tank right now. Maybe you can tell us about some of the species that we have in here. Let's start with, we were talking earlier about the hermit crab. Let's yes. tell people about that one. There we, go. Oh, we have this little guy here. He may not come out because he likes to hide in a lot, but you can see his little pincers right there. So the hermit crab actually lives in these shells, and as the hermit crab grows, he'll find a new shell to go into, so a larger shell each time he grows. Um, one thing that we've seen with hermit crabs over the years, and one of the reasons why we want to promote World Oceans Day, is in terms of the pollution in our oceans. So the hermit crab, because he finds a new home, to, or a new shell as a home each year, uh, we've actually seen them inhabit soda cans in the ocean. Is that right? They actually mistaken them for shells and use them as their own homes. Okay. Okay, really interesting hermit crab. Let's talk about something else. Uh, the, you've got some beautiful sea stars yes. in there, uh, one of my favorites. So let's pick one of these up. Well, this guy here is the spiny sea star. And as you can see, he has a little bit of a rough surface, yeah. a little oh, spiny yeah. there. And if you flip him over, you can see all his tubular feet. And this is actually how he feeds. So the food will come in here and they'll follow along his feet right to his mouth here. So they're pretty interesting creatures. Um, they're more of a filter feeder, which means anything kind of filtering through the water, that's how they eat. If they overcome some larger organisms that they want to eat, they'll actually throw their stomach out. Is that right? And then the animals. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Okay, how convenient. <laughs> <laughs> throw the stomach out at the food. <laughs> All right, let's talk about one more. Uh, maybe one that people see a lot on our beaches here in Newfoundland. Mm -hmm. This one right here. So this is the green sea urchin, and as you can see, he's very spiny, and that's part of his protective shell. Right. So that when birds come down, they can't really grab him because nobody wants to be pricked by the spines. The interesting thing about this guy, though, he has a mouth right here. It's very hard to see unless you go very, very close, but he has five teeth there. You can see the little white nodulars. I see it. Um, those teeth are extremely, extremely strong. They can actually drill through a rock. I did not know that. Yeah. How interesting. Very interesting with these guys. So normally when people see these on the beach, all of this, uh, the spines on it will have to be decaying off. So you'll usually just see a green shell with some linear lines down around the side of him. So they look very different once they're dry on land versus when they're in the water. Okay. All right. So just uh, some of the examples of things people can learn about at the uh, Oceans Day event on Saturday. Mm -hmm. um, I guess the idea behind this really is to educate people about what's living in the ocean so that people can learn why it's important to protect the ocean. 100%, yeah. World Oceans Day actually came about, uh, it was proposed by the Government of Canada uh, back in 1992. And it was further proclaimed then by the United Nations as June 8th would be in a World Oceans Day. So it's actually celebrated globally now, internationally. Uh, Canada actually took it a step further, and in 2010, we announced what we have on Oceans Week from June 1st to June 8th. So it's, it's a really great time to celebrate what our oceans are and what our connectedness is to the ocean. And uh, so activities going on all week in different parts of the province. How can people find out maybe about something going on near where they live? Yeah, right. So our kickoff event is here at the Marine Institute. It's going to happen June 1st from 10 to 3. But there are events right across the province. Uh, we encourage people to go to our Facebook page. It's just simply World Oceans Day, Newfoundland, Labrador. And there's a full listing of all the activities happening across the province. All right, Don, thanks very much for telling us about uh, the Touch Tank and all the events going on for World Oceans Week. Thanks Thank very you. much. Thank you very much. Well, from a touch tank to a different kind of tank, politician Nick Whalen earned some heady bragging rights in Ottawa this week. It wasn't for his work as the Liberal MP for St. John's East, but rather 
for his beer brewing skills. Whalen won the election brew title with his concoction, and the friendly competition among members of Parliament saw the Labatt's Brewery give $25,000 to Equal Voice. That's a national organization, as you know, that's dedicated to getting more women elected to political office. Well, here's Nick Whalen explaining his brew to reporters on Parliament Hill. I called it the Valen, uh, Whalen Vice, so it's a wheat beer, so the vice, and uh, Valen means to choose or to vote for, so I figured that would be a good thing in an election year to call my beer. And uh, it's a half a vice, so it's a bit of a cloudy wheat beer, and I had uh, the brewmaster put in some extra citrus and lemon flavors to give it more of a, it tastes like a bit like a shock top. And so uh, you have that sort of, normally people throw a slice of orange into a wheat beer in the summer in Germany on the patio, and so this one comes with that taste already baked in. So you know there is well know there's interprovincial uh, beer barriers you know it's yeah. hard it's hard to get blue star and well, jockey you know. horse and black horse all jockey club Souk dolly wall Souk dolly yeah. wall and nathaniel college their beer didn't get here on time so i'm not sure if that had anything to do with interprovincial beer uh barriers or was just problems with the shipping so can people in town, people in CBS, people all across uh, Newfoundland and Labrador ever get to drink this beer? Or I'm not sure. I think there's only um, there's only three 30-liter uh, kegs of it left, and my guess is that one of those will be consumed at a at a little private party down at Mill Street involving my uh, team, and I'm not sure what will happen to the other two. Thirty years ago, I know that the things were not available here. So we used to get uh, the ingredients from Toronto. Next, the second installment of our series, Ramadan on the Rock. We go into the kitchen of international flavors. Welcome back once again. The Muslim celebration of Ramadan ends on Tuesday with Eid. The month-long celebration is a time for prayer, reflection, and fasting during the day. Now, in our second segment of Ramadan on the Rock, our contributor, Prajala Dikshit, takes you to International Flavors in St. John's to speak with someone who fasts, even though she has to run a restaurant. I was just wondering what your favorite foods around Ramadan are, Auntie. Pakoras are my favorite. Mm -hmm. That it has to be pakoras, fruit chaat. It's fruit called chart. fruit yeah. salad, yeah. you know. So fruit chaat is my favorite, yeah. and the milk yeah. with the ch chia seed yeah. and with yogurt. Yeah. That's my favorite. Yeah. 
and uh, pulao is my favorite. Right. If nothing is there, I just mix, uh, chop up the <coughs> chicken and make a broth yeah. and add the rice in it. Yeah. In a quick way, yeah. if you want to make a real, 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 then you bake with the spices, make yeah. separate broth right. and then put it. And now it's some biryani masalas are there. You sprinkle a little biryani masala and your biryani is ready. <laughs> <laughs> Today, it's such a different St. John's and we get all the ingredients for, for making food here today in St. John's. Uh, but what was it like 30 years ago? How did you get your ingredients uh, and cook your traditional meals? 30 years ago, there was, it was people they used to get together at home and one of my friend, her name is Momina Vasila. She used, they used to bring stuff and we will give the order to them and people will come and pick it up the individual they were they he will pack the individual orders so right. they, it's not like she has to divide or right, anything right. so we will go and pick it up from her house right so that was all volu volunteering basis right right nothing you know like she was charging or anything no you are surrounded by food auntie yeah. um and ramadan is a time of fasting um do you find that a challenge no that doesn't uh, no. No. That uh, the food doesn't bother us. Okay. Uh, only thing is little you get tired, little bit you know your mind is not, <laughs> little bit you know tired mind. Right. In the beginning of the month of Ramadan, it will be little hard on you of course. because it's cleansing your body That's right. and it's detoxifying. So it's taking all the things, certain things are going on in your body. Right. So automatically you will feel that. Right. Maybe you will get headaches, you will have, you know, get tiredness. But as it uh, progressing, end of the, the, the tenth, fa tenth right. last days of fast, right. because that is very holy for right. those days right. for us. Right. So we keep praying that, that week a lot. Right. So if we don't have strength, we cannot pray that's a lot. Right. So that's it. Yeah. Okay. So that's, uh, you know, like, uh, we, you can see, my, you know, she's fasting. That's right. She's working harder than me. Yes, of course, I'm going just there fasting, and then, yeah. and you know, like they have to wash the dishes. But I try to give them little extra help too, right. because one girl was here. She washes the dishes, right. and then she will, uh, you know, she will. She comes three, but then, uh, you know, then that girl was gone five, right. so she will work the end of the day. Right. So we are rotating this way, right. and like I was helping this guy because he's fasting too. Basit, Basit yeah, is yeah. fasting. So then we help each other, you right. know. And we have two more installments of Ramadan on the Rock mm -hmm. for you. It must be hard to fast and be carrying that oh. food around. <laughs> it would uh, be hard for me. <laughs> we'll bring you more on Ramadan on the Rock and that's on uh, next week on Tuesday.
The East Coast Trail Association was born 25 years ago. It was 1994, and this was the start. I probably shouldn't have worn this on the hike today, but at the big Trail Razor hike on Saturday, June 8th, you can do the East Coast Trail your way. Join CBCNL at the annual Trail Razor hike in support of the East Coast Trail Association. The fun starts in Bay Bulls with five hikes to choose from. It's skipping. Register online at eastcoasttrail.com. Well, for part of the weekend at least, you're going to want to bundle up if you go on a hike, but not all of it, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and not everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, temperatures won't be terrible tomorrow. Just a, a little bit cooler for the Avalon, really, and then along the northeast coast. But it is improving. Yeah, Sunday looks pretty Sunday good. Sunday looks lovely. Yeah, we'll take a look at the future tracker. Uh, as we head overnight into Sunday morning, that the sky should actually stay uh, pretty clear for the first half of the day anyway, and then the next system will move in. That's going to bring some cloud cover with it. They'll start to move in towards the at late afternoon for the southwest and then spread north and uh, and east as we head through the night. And there's that rain that I was talking about, and that's the start of what looks like a pretty uh, wet weekend or rather wet beginning of next week. So here's a look at uh, what uh, the temperatures are going to be like for your Sunday. Again, some sunshine to start the day. Temperatures looks like they should reach the 20 degree mark for Gander towards Corner Brook around 21 degrees. I have 16 in there for St. John's and then temperatures a little bit cooler for Port of Basque. Again, that rain will move in earlier for uh, the southwest. And eventually I have sunshine in the forecast, but again, you're going to see that rain late day. Uh, Lab City 12 degrees, 17 in Happy Valley Goose Bay. Nain is going to stay cool though, three degrees and unsettled with that risk of either showers or flurries through the day. So here's a look at Monday morning. We're getting into that southerly flow and with that warmer temperatures and it looks like that will be the story over the next couple of days. Uh, that rain will move out Monday afternoon stick or not move out, but the next system will move in. It's going to stay pretty gray essentially for the next three or four days after uh, after we get to that and then again into Wednesday staying into that southerly flow bringing all that moisture up and that's exactly what's going to happen at least through Labrador as well. So those temperatures though as I mentioned are going to stay warm. So here's a look at the next five days. Six degrees tomorrow with the potential for some drizzle but then look at those temperatures as we head into next week. 16 tomorrow lovely again that rain moving in late day. 15 16 degrees for the beginning of next week. Continuing through Wednesday, likely not going to see relief from this rain, at least until maybe even Friday, it looks like. Uh, for Central, same thing, 15 tomorrow, so similar temperatures to what you saw today with some rain. And then Sunday clearing skies and 21 degrees, another 21 degree day it looks like on Tuesday. But generally, we're going to bump up above, the, uh, above what's normal for this time of year, should be sitting around 13, 14 degrees. For Western Newfoundland, 16 tomorrow, 21 on Sunday, and then again, that rain through the week, but temperatures between uh, 16 and 20 degrees. So certainly good news there. We'll take the warmer temperatures for the rain. Uh, chance of showers tomorrow for Eastern Labrador with the uh, sun peeking out at times. Best chance of seeing that sunshine will be on Sunday. And then again, staying gray. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday looks like some peaks of sun and 13 degrees. Those overnight lows though, 9 degrees by the time we get into next week. So that's good news there. Uh, Western Labrador, 5 degrees tomorrow with either, either rain or snow. Uh, showers will move in late day on Sunday. So you should see the sun through the afternoon there. And then uh, between 10 and 12 degrees to round out the beginning or to begin next week. Well, uh, we are going to start with our end. The, I cannot talk today. End uh, with our weather photo. So this is a beautiful one. It's gorgeous. Oh, it's wow. got everything. Fine day on clothes too. Yeah, exactly. I'll tell you where this photo was taken when we come back. South coast. Yep. Aha. Very good.
and Anniversary Greetings is brought to you by Lane's Retirement Living. With a pool, cinema, and chef-prepared meals, everyone wants in. Reserve your suite today. Happy birthday to Elsie Lear, who turned 90 years old yesterday. She lives in her own home in Brown's Arm. Congratulations to Robert and Teresa Cavanaugh of St. John's, who are celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary today. Happy 52nd anniversary to Walter and Eileen LeDrew of Traytown. Happy birthday to Nina Hodnot of River of Ponds, who celebrated her 90th birthday on the 24th. Nina is living in Cornerbrook. And a special birthday to tell you about. Best wishes to Teresa Roach in St. John's, who is celebrating her 102nd birthday today. Congratulations. And a happy 90th birthday coming up on Sunday to Emmeline Mercer in St. John's. And a happy 91st birthday wishes to Geraldine Sweetapple of Glovertown, who celebrated on the 20th. Congratulations to John and Winifred Kennedy of St. John's as they celebrate their 60th wedding anniversary this Sunday. Congratulations to Ray and Ivy Clark of 80 Town, who celebrated their 58th wedding anniversary on the 27th. Happy birthday wishes to Margaret Diamond of Twillingate, who turns 90 next Monday the 3rd. Happy 90th birthday to Ronald Clark of Chance Cove, Trinity Bay, now in St. John's. His special day was on Wednesday. And special birthday wishes to Vera Stokes in St. John's, who celebrated her 95th birthday on Tuesday with family and friends, including her granddaughter, our own Carolyn Stokes. And a happy 70th wedding anniversary tomorrow to George and Sylvia Roach in Coley's Point. And it's a 63rd wedding anniversary tomorrow for Clyde and Dorothy Best of Chamberlain's. Congratulations. And a happy 90th birthday to Dorothy Kennedy, currently living in Cornerbrook. And best wishes to Leander and Hazel Davis, who celebrated 70 years together on the 27th. Happy 66th anniversary to Stuart and Cindy Button of Mount Pearl, now at their summer home in Greens Pond. Happy birthday wishes to George Burden of Blackhead Conception Bay North, who celebrated his 96th birthday on the 27th. Rita Halloran, formerly of St. Vincent's and now living in St. John's, celebrated her 99th birthday yesterday. Happy 90th birthday to Ralph Roberts of Cupids, who celebrated on Wednesday. And a happy 90th birthday as well to Dorothy Kennedy in Cornerbrook. And it's a 90th birthday for Henry House from Belburns, who now lives in Cornerbrook. A happy 95th birthday to Donald Swires, originally from Botwood, now in Lewisport. And happy 90th birthday to Lillian House of Grands Falls, Windsor. Her big day is this coming Sunday. Congratulations. Yeah. Always a fine looking crowd. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well done. <laughs> All right, so, so picture, yeah, let's picture see if time. I can, let's see if I can talk through this one. Okay, uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll help you if you get lost for words. Yeah, isn't that a great shot? So Debbie cast her net wide. He did. And said she south did. coast. She did a great job. Yeah, it's in Burgio. Burgio. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, we had a lot of Burgio on the show this week. Have we? Yeah. Oh. Well, yeah, nice we had day Steve out. Hiscock. Oh, I know, and you I mean, said it. I didn't realize that that caption was there. It was. I can hear my late mother-in-law saying that yeah. fine day or nice day nice on day clothes. clothes it certainly yeah. was this was uh this picture was taken yesterday so captured the beauty of the day from b pink sent us that photo yeah. yeah. it's pretty hard to take a bad picture in burgio especially when it's like that especially out. when it's sunny look at yeah. i'm gonna get out there one day it'd be nice so to take to nice to take one of the boats and go along the south coast it is yeah. really a different world mm -hmm. and as you can see a gorgeous one and the sandy beaches yeah yeah, and if you want to send us uh, some photos of your adventures this weekend, send them to nlphotos at cbc.ca. I know I'll be taking mine. <laughs> a lot of sports this weekend, too, right? So we got yeah. the Growlers tonight. Right. There's that basketball team. <laughs> Just right? that. You got the NHL, yeah. right? So you got everything going on. So yeah. if the weather's not great, you can catch you can a bit of sports. Stay inside, yeah, but exactly. Anyhow, lots to watch, lots <laughs> to do. Have a great weekend. <laughs> See you on Monday, everyone. <laughs> Good night.